the takeover. Okay, did we start? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Oh wow, is it is it cool if I start? I'm sorry. I'm is it cool if I start? Oh wow. Okay, is it It's great that it's great that Oh yeah, I started. I got all that in there. By the way, whatever your side job is, that lady is not going to make it. I mean, first of all, I don't they didn't probably it didn't pick up what she was saying, but she sounds hysterical. It sounds like she's a part of an abusive relationship which Unless you work for me, I don't want you in any other abusive relationships. But the it is back, and already we're off to a horrible start. <laughs> we're already off to a hor- uh, mom. I know you like the it, but it, we're off to a horrible start. It says hi, but guess what? Horrible start because I had to deal with her other job. Don't have another job. Maybe then you guys do a better job of, of being part of the Patreon, so I could pay the it. But, I mean, go to the bathroom. Sure, we don't have to start yet. Let's wait. The podcast will start later. No, I, how am I going to start? The first segment is talking about the it. It's unbelievable. I got a dog running around here? Did I? Um, I First of all, we'll get to that. But did, did we start? Have we started? Of course we started. Why can't I hear myself? Now I can hear myself. I. You know what? You know what's crazy about the way this has already started? Get away from me. Get away from me, dog. Get away from me. And I know that's no way to talk to a dog as a as an old dog owner. No, no, no. Get your, you, If you touch the camera and it moves, I'm going to get really mad. Did we start? Come here. No, no, no. Don't come here. Go up there. No, no, no. No. You can come up later. No. This is by far the worst start I've ever had to a podcast. I started because you could hear my voice. But the thing about this week is I started way before you heard my voice because we started because the it was doing its own thing. It was doing its other job. It was doing its own thing, and I was just sitting here waiting to start, and now I'm started, and then the, it goes to the bathroom. So then, did I even start? I don't even know what's happening. By far the worst start I've ever had. The worst start I've ever had in the history of my podcast. In the history of my podcast, I don't even know how I'm going to edit this beginning because I definitely can't have the beginning of the podcast start with just me looking at the camera, not saying anything as you hear some background noise, which I don't even know how... It will come in. I would have to listen to it. If you can hear what is going on, then maybe I'll leave it in. But is that even entertaining? Although it did sound like two people going through a domestic, a very verbally abusive domestic relationship, which was kind of entertaining. Because I guess that it is another another assistant to some other very powerful people that make you scared and make you be on the phone late at night because we're doing a late night episode. But that alone was already crazy because we had to wait for the computer update so that it thought it could go do its other job, which, of course, that's its real job. This isn't even a job. I don't even know what that, why it participates other than my mom saying that the it adds to the podcast and it's better for it. So I do what my mom says because I'm a good son. And not only am I a good son, but I'm going to be a good father and a good husband. And that pisses off the it. The it said that we it, – it, it is like, hey, I want you to stop talking about being a good father. And you know why? Because I think it makes her want to have a kid with me. Is it is it a her? Yeah, but it's still in it because it's it, we we don't have sexuality with it, and I messed up. And how many times am I going to mess up with the it? 
They know you're a female. Did anybody reach out to you? So then they don't care that much. Because if they were good, if they're good investigators, they would find you. There's some good investigators out there. They know how to find people. They could, maybe. Coffee's not kicking in because it's a late episode, so we got LaCroix. It's a challenge what? It's a challenge for you to work to do this. To find you? I'll tell you what, it's definitely not a challenge to find you if you got a couple drinks in you. Hey, wink face, and we are starting. Welcome back to the takeover, guys. I'm your host, Michael Inochi. Sorry about that original fucking start. I don't really know how that was starting, but we saw we obviously started because my voice is being heard, and I can finally hear my voice. But in the beginning, I didn't hear my voice, and now we are off to a fast start. And it's is it is it because we got coffee kicking in later? Nope, we got a water. We got water to keep our fucking mouth nice and and wisps. Wisp is that a word? Nope. Wisp, wisp is not a word to describe when your mouth is nice and wet. Moist. Moist is a word that people don't like. I'll tell you what. You know what could easily slide in my mouth right now? Jello. You thought I was going to say something sexual. Nope. Jello, because of its texture, would like slide right down my throat because of the water. How about that, guys? This is how we're going to start. We're going to talk about how easily Jello would slide down my throat because the water ratio in my mouth to throat to stomach is fresh. Why is that funny? Did you laugh at that? Why am I an idiot? Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot, yet uh, you come into my studio, which is in my bedroom, which we don't have a studio because of COVID. So you come into this podcast studio. First of all, you come five minutes late. You were five minutes late, by the way. You came at, you came at 9.35. Now what time is it right now? It's 11 o'clock, and we're just starting the podcast. You've been here for 90 minutes doing other work how imagine this imagine this it imagine i show up to outback and i'm just a server probably what i would be if i was working there i'm just a server i get to outback right what do you we're, we were talking oh, yeah yeah but doesn't matter you're making excuses imagine i show up to outback i go into the manager's office i sit down i start talking to the manager and then I open up a laptop and I start editing my podcast. What do you think he would say to me? He'd be like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, you know what I'm doing? I'm editing my podcast because I got to get double work done because I'm not sleeping a lot these days. And then we chatted it up and then he was like, oh, you have four tables. You should probably get to work. And then I went out there. But at the end of the shift, he was like, why did you come in and edit and talk to me and waste 90 minutes? I'd look at him and be like, because I'm a fuck up and I would tell him I'm a fuck up and that's what I want you to do. I want you to say you're a fuck up. Tell me right now. I want people to know that you said you're a fuck up. Now I feel bad. I didn't really want you. I wanted you to defend yourself. Be a little strong there. Especially, you know, it's been a hundred years ago today women got the right to vote in this country. What's what's it called that they got to vote? Um, The Revolutionary War. It's when women got to vote, it was the the Twelfth Amendment. Dictionary? Suffrage? The right to vote in a political election. That just says the right to vote. A a women suffrage? Cool. So a hundred years now, you women. A hundred years, women. A hundred years, you guys have had the right to vote. And you still can't fucking figure it out. You still can't fucking get one of your own in the goddamn office. Is that, should we cut that part out? That's fine. There we go. That's a fan. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's the left side of my ear. It's the left side of the building. Oh, cool. We're dripping water. This is already, this, you know what's bad? No, no, no. It's good. It's good. It's good. Put that back up how it was because of my OCD and you're going to ruin my life. Ugh. It, get your ass back on the bed, the chair. You're, there's a computer over there. Listen, I don't, I don't know if we're doing good right now. Is the puck? Is this episode all right? L- last week's episode bombed. Last week's episode bombed, and I can't have another bomb. And I'm, guys. The thing is, I've always been very vulnerable with you on this podcast. I've always been very vulnerable with you, and I'm okay to admit. Like last week, there was mistakes. 
We had technical difficulties that I put in. I actually did a lot of fun editing editing on last week's episode, and a lot of you didn't even see it because it bombed. I don't know what happened to you. If you're listening, I don't know what happened to you, but I had a lot of fun last week in editing last week's episode, and I bombed. And in last week's episode, I mentioned leaving the mistakes in because I let you see me at my worst. Because if you're going to see me at my worst, you deserve me at the best. Isn't that one of the sayings? Nope, it's the other way around. You don't deserve me at the best if you see me at the worst. It's something like that, right? Fuck. We don't know. We just know that women have been suffering. Women's suffrage. You don't deserve me at my best, Marilyn Monroe. She said that? Oh, bullshit. Well, this is a woman episode. Listen, here's the deal. What's going on? Is nothing going on right right now? Do, 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 is everything fine? Do you think it's fine? Should we reshoot it? Should we start all over again? Oh, no. I'm panicking. I'm, pa- I'm having a panic attack right now. Water's kicking in. You think that's funny? It's dripping everywhere, too. Okay, here's the deal. I want to start, guys. I really do want to start, but I want to. I want to address last week's episode how it bombed, and I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not a proud of myself person. I'm not a proud of myself person. Or no, no, no. I know. I was gonna fix it. I'm saying it like that on purpose. I know when I'm being dumb on purpose because I know what I'm doing. Back away, dog. I'm. I'm a dog borrower. Er. But before we get to that, last week's episode bombed, and I'm gonna take responsibility. I will take responsibility for it bombing, but I also want you guys to take responsibility because remember, this is a team. We have a team, and the greatest team members are on the Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash the takeover. Hit it up. Hit it up. If you want to be a part of the Patreon, you hit it up. You go to patreon.com slash the takeover, and you check out the tiers, and you hit it up. You hit it up like it's a nightclub. Yo, what are we doing tonight? Yo, let's hit up the Patreon. There you go. It's that simple, okay? So if you're a good teammate, then you do that. All right. Now, I'm not saying any of last week is your guys' fault, right? I know that there's no I in team. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm walking on eggshells right now. I'm tiptoeing around this right now. I'm taking responsibility for the loss. I bombed. Sometimes I go do stand-up, and I might not have a great set. I'm not going to call it a bomb. I might not have a great set. I don't really bomb anymore. I'm just not having as fun as I could have, Okay. Because even if you're not laughing, I'm still having a good time. You're going to back off, dog. Okay? Here's the deal. is Part of the reason it bombed last week was also because you guys didn't do your work. And we've stressed on this podcast about how we're a team. And we stressed about how we want to work together and build each other and, 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 and make ourselves better. Every week, we w- even if it's a sillier episode versus a more serious episode, there's always something we can take from each episode. Even me. I walk around. I walk away and I go, wow, I kind of. I kind of learned something about myself, and I also reminded something about myself. Hey, hey, I also reminded myself about something I've learned that I wanted to remember. And the it is looking at me right now like it's learning. And that's crazy, but it also makes me feel good. And I just want all of you guys to feel good, but I also want you guys to maybe reach out and be like, hey, We take responsibility last week for the bomb too. Now, I'm not asking you to, and I'm not saying that last week you bombed. I'm just saying I bombed, and it's disappointing. And we need to come back this week with a strong wing. We got to have the intensity there because this is the greatest sports podcast of all time that doesn't talk about sports. What do you think is going on, It? Okay, are you – how are you? How are you doing? You look good. Now you you know when I ask you and then we make eye contact, there's a glow. I think you want to settle down. Like you know how – What? let me ask you this. And it's fine. You're allowed to answer. Why do you want me to stop talking about how good of a father I'm going to be? Or is it annoying because you know it's true? It's not true. You don't think I would be a great father. Or you don't think I want to settle down. <laughs> well, let's just say if I had – all my cards in place, I would be ready to settle down. Right now, all my cards are a little all over the table. I need to bring one here. I need to bring another one here. Now, hold on. Before I finish this little game I'm doing, let's imagine we're six months, a year to now, and we have like a fucking team working on this podcast. We're doing graphics where I'm actually bringing the cards in. Fuck. 
five cards. That's how I envision when someone says, hey, when I get my cards in place, I imagine there's five. Like you're playing poker, right? Is that where the phrase is from? And I didn't even know that. I just made it up because I assume just from taking information I've learned in life. Pretty cool. Did that impress you a little bit? Do you think just knowing that, be honest, not for the bit, you don't think I'm going to be a good dad? Oh, you think I will be a good dad? Obviously not right now. I'm in a fucking chair doing a podcast in the corner of my room with two dead dogs over my left shoulder. <laughs> well, yeah, they're not both alive. The other one's from my childhood. The other, and then there's that one. And then there was another little Jack Russell Terrier, but she was a bitch. I do have a dog in here right now because I'm borrowing a dog. I'm in the business of borrowing dogs. I'm not going to get another dog, as we discussed in the last episode, because of not making irrational decisions in a pandemic. But... Because I'm smart enough to do that, and I know that we've all wanted to make some decisions right now, but we need, to, we, we need to be smarter about it. Now, I'm willing to borrow dogs, and borrowing a dog lets me know that, hey, I definitely don't want another dog soon. It's just a big responsibility, right? Dog? <laughs> it's like it's, I'm borrowing dogs right now. I'm a, I'm a dog borrower, and that's fine. That's a way to, 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 to release it. Now, now, I wish there was a way to be like to prove to you that I'd be a good fa- father and borrow someone's son. Bro, imagine if you borrow... Hey, come here. Come here. What are you doing? Okay. You're just going to sit on my lap the whole podcast. Yeah? Okay. So, this is already... Look at this. Look at this dog just chill. You don't think this looks like, hey, maybe a chance of being a good father? It's laying on my lap. Why? Because I'm a good father. (laughs) All right. You've had your fun. Either lay down or you got to get off. You want to stay? Okay, you can stay. Okay, so what do we got going on this week? Are you just going to take photos of me or are you going to do your goddamn job? I don't really know what your job is other than just to like kind of talk to you so I'm not alone in here. Yeah, I mean, I know that. All right. Well, since we got a little friend here, you're my little male friend. You're a male friend. I got a male friend here. Okay, I'm borrowing dogs. It's another way. People say, why don't you, uh, what is it they when they suggest the dog thing, they go, why don't you, uh, um, you know, when you fucking take care of a dog for a while until you find it at home. Why are we, oh, so we're both stupid. Foster. We can't both be stupid at the same time. One of us has to be smart. Guys, welcome to It Is Back episode. That's what this episode is going to be called. This episode is going to be called The It Is Back that's what it is. I love when I do my episode of the podcast and then throughout the po- I'm like, ooh, what's it going to be called? You know what? I know why last week's episode called uh, uh, episode bombed because I named it something I wasn't really feeling. Even though I mentioned that throughout the podcast, that's not what I went with. You're doing research to try to find out what last week's episode was. But maybe you should know that already. You should know what uh, the name of every episode is, right? Mom, mom, if you're listening right now, don't you think that it should know what the name of every goddamn episode is? Am I being too mean this week? It's stupid, right? But it was because I was kind of trying to get to people that they, they that everybody has a little inner magician in them. But we failed. I bombed. Hmm. I wonder what you were going to say there. I wonder what you were going to say that you couldn't say out loud. Interesting. Well, how do I feel like this episode's going this week? I feel like I'm, I'm going to bomb two, two weeks in a row. <laughs> I feel like two weeks in a row we're going to have – I feel like we're done. The show's getting canceled. I'm Ellen. I'm Ellen. Let's talk about Ellen for a little bit like we were, right? How do you fucking take away? Did they? Is she gone? Or just three? We don't know yet. What's the story with the Ellen thing? And I don't like doing the whole topical shit. I don't. I know a lot of podcasts do it. But what is the whole story on the goddamn Ellen thing? No, that's a joke. Get the fuck out of here. What's the real thing about it? You falling for some shit. No, but that's a joke. Go go to that. I, that's it's that, that's a joke. She's fucking she. So the it, fucking. I go. What's up with the Ellen? She goes new. That's the real thing right there. By the way, James Corden. So my it. Just so you know where her fucking brave her brain wavelength is. I go. What's the Ellen story? So she googles new Ellen host, sees a fucking thing by. Go back to the. I, I want people to know the fucking. Uh, it's a, but I want I want I want them to know the website so they laugh. IndieWire.com, If you've ever click on the fucking website, 
has, the first thing that pops up is there's a petition sign for Eric Andre to be the new host of Ellen. Eric Andre put out on his fucking Instagram as a joke because he's a comedian with a Photoshop of him on her face saying, look, 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 there it is. She fell for it. She just fucking fell for it. And she's my it. She fell for Eric Andre's joke. She hasn't had time to research why because you're doing your other job, huh? Well, guess what? This is your job now. Your job is to not get fucking fooled by another comedian. So anyways, the real there there uh, is, is there a real thing that Eric Gordon might host that show? Is he gay? He should be. I mean, come on. Is he not gay? Is Eric Gordon not is it that, wait wait, what's his name? Well, now I'm fucking confusing names. James Gordon. James Cor- Corden. Is he? James Corden's not gay? Wow. Well, you learn something new every week. I thought he was for sure gay. Well, what do you know? So listen, let's go back to fucking... Well, the wow, his girlfriend is the most British-looking girl I've ever seen in my life. Oh, my God. Should I put the picture up? All right, I'm going to put up a picture of James Corden's girlfriend. Could you, Her face looks like... Oh, hello. Her face looks like she drinks tea four times a day. Wow. She's pretty. She's pretty, but definitely drinks tea all the time. Wow. The most British looking girlfriend of all time. So funny. Has the most British looking arms. That's the photo I want to use to the right. Yeah. The most British looking shoulders and arms. Yeah. That's a British body. That's a British body. Have you ever met a British girl? And I'm not even, is this allowed? Am I going to get canceled for this? Can I destruct, can I construct a woman's body? Bro, she has, that's the most, yep, that's the most British body I've ever seen. And you know what I'm talking about, it. You agree. There's something about it that's just like, oh, I've walked out a couple times, but we also drink warm beer. That's also the worst accent ever for somebody who has a British mom. By the way, I have a British mom so I can make fun of British people. I mean, British women... British women who aren't actresses always look like like this. Or, or how about this? British people are the most unphotogenic people I've ever me- seen. By the way, she's pretty. I'm not saying she's ugly, but they're so. I mean, yeah. Look at this. I mean, well, that's a that's a bit. Yes, sure. I mean, there's a stereotype, sure, but I mean, just in general, photo. They're not photogenic. But anyways, going back to the Ellen thing, we're gonna go back to the Ellen thing a little bit. First of all. This is what's fucking bullshit about what's going on with this fucking cancel culture bullshit fucking bitch ass pussies. Go back to the bitch ass pussy bullshit. There, what, what the rumor is that fucking not the rumor is it that that Ellen has fucking producers that are fucking horrible, right? I'm sorry, I'm swearing a lot, mom, but that's just how it's gonna have to be this week because you know when I swear, I use it as a crutch because I don't know what I'm talking about, and this is why I don't talk about talk about talk about talk about. This is why I don't talk about talk about. This is why I don't do topical stuff as much. So, what are you doing? What are you doing? What, why, why, are you, why are you trying to sign a petition? Are you getting me mad? Okay. Here's the deal. The thing about... they, they the, 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 But the story is... So that's what I want to know. I want to know what the story is about the Ellen thing. That's what we're trying to... I mean, it. what is your job? Isn't it to just to help the show keep going? I feel like we're 30 minutes in and nothing's happened. Really? Is there even content this week? Are you sure? Really? Are you, are you sure it's not because I'm just fucking constructing women's bodies? First of all, okay, so there was an inve- investigation done and apparently... Some of her producers, right, are assholes. Really, like, because she puts a lot of pressure on them. And she wants things done very, very, she wants it done well, right? Apparently, there's always been rumors that she's been kind of a dickhead, right? But then they want to attack this person. They forget, first of all, they forget how much fucking Ellen's done for so so many people. Not only women, but fucking gay rights. Like, they, they they forget what this, they forget, this is me defending, like, they forget what she went through. Remember in the 80s when they were calling her a fucking, they were calling her a fag. 
They were like tearing her apart. They were calling her all those fucking horrible names. They they basically booted her out because she admitted she was gay. She had a, a hit show. She, first of all, she worked her ass off as a stand-up comedian, then as an actress, had a hit show, then came out. It wasn't received well. Had to kind of fucking hide, almost like she was like being canceled for being gay. Then she comes back. She's loved for coming back and, and brave. And then she comes back and then she fucking earns the top spot in having a daytime show. And throughout all of the good she's done on her show, even if she's been an asshole, hasn't, hasn't that – I'm not saying it's right if someone's an asshole, but don't you deserve a little bit? Haven't, hasn't she earned the right to be a cunt? Right? Can't you earn the right? Yes. Exactly. It's just like what first of all, the, the the biggest thing for me with the Ellen thing is like um is there's a joke I think Chappelle did it I think Chappelle did it in one of his recent specials where he's like or uh, other come you've heard this joke before is like if Michael Jackson did something so bad you know what I mean that joke like it's just like what about the music he gave us isn't the payoff a little bit like and even there's even the joke done about fucking Bill Cosby. It's like how many young black American kids did he influence to be better or or maybe like help out who didn't have father figures or something like that. Right. I'm not even I'm not going there. Don't use this to fucking cancel me. Whatever. It doesn't matter. We're all going to get canceled anyways. Fuck this place. But my whole point is. My whole point is what they've done is Trump's what she's done. If you're saying we're trying to cancel Ellen and her show because they're being dicks. And finally, July, there's two reports of Nightmare and a producer sexually harassing the junior staffers. OK, what does that have to do with fucking Ellen? I get it because some people will be like, oh, this will go back to the Joe Paterno thing. Do you know about that? Of course you don't. It's a football thing. Joe Paterno was the head coach of Penn State. Penn State, he had one of his like assistant coaches apparently had like a camp and he was fucking kids in the bathroom kids oh yeah it, it was really bad so apparently he might have I, I would have to fucking know for i don't know if they ever proved 100 percent he knew they they definitely knew that he knew something was going on and he was just more like i don't want to deal with it fucking deal with that i don't give a shit i got football to worry about do you get what i'm saying like that's how he, joe paterno worked and i'm not saying that's right but that guy was so if you knew joe paterno when you were growing up watching football he was started to get off we're so off the walls with how we started with the ellen thing and not that any of this is comparable, but Joe Paterno was like a, a football coach into it. I, uh, can you Google how old he was when he died? Let's figure this out. Joe, P yeah, died at what age? He's dead. Should click on the Wikipedia right there. It'll tell you when he died. Click on the death. Just age. Just type age. Yeah, how old was he? She goes, he died in 2012. How fucking old was he? If you click on it, it tells you the age. If you click on the wiki... Have you never used Wikipedia? Click on the fucking page. Go, go down. See where it says born? Scroll. Scroll. Stop. Go back up. 85. See how it says 85 right there? See how it says 85? Mom, it is useless. See how when it says born and died and it does the math for you and it says 85. Do you see it? Have you never used Wikipedia? No? It's 85. Have you never used Wikipedia? I'm going to ask you a goddamn question again. Do you know that you're wrong? Do you know that you fucked up? Do you think you fuck up because you have two jobs? Or do you think you fucked up because you just don't know how to do things? Remember when you suggested that you should be the it because you would be good at stuff like this? Remember that? You're really bad at this job. It's fun to like have you here, but I'm saying it seems like – no, no, no. It seems like I'm doing a lot of the work. Why are you whispering? You're scared for people to hear your voice because they know that they'll be, they're going to hear your voice and be like, is there a man? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. So he was 85. So he – by the way, he was coaching till he was 84. So hear this out. Joe Paterno was so football – he couldn't leave it. It's what kept him alive. Like, that's a real thing. Like, if you ever, like, know relatives, like, and they stop working, they retire, sometimes people get sick and they die. And they keep working, keeps their brain going. That's how Joe Paterno was. He was so football. The assumption is that 
apparently, if you look, uh, he he had a coach that was, yeah, molesting worse than the worst thing you could do to a, to kids, and he had heard about it, but with, but ignored it because he was like, I need to worry about football. I did nothing to stop it, and that came out in the end that he did he did know about it, I guess. So they took down his statues. They had to fire him. He got fired. Fucking, he got fired in fall. He died f- three months later. Immediate, the minute he lost football, he's like, <coughs> died, old age. Now, why did I bring up that point? Why did I even bring up the whole point? Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now going back to Ellen, so that's, thank you. It, you did something good. Let's get a sip of water so we can keep the lips wet. Now, I will say this. Great job keeping me on track there. I will say this. The Ellen thing is like, sure, she doesn't – it's not her responsibility how somebody else's actions are in there, but it, I guess it does come down on her because and you have to prove that she knew about it. You would have to prove that Ellen knew that a, a, one of the, her producers sexually harassed a, a, a girl. Then you could be like, Ellen, why didn't you care? That's different. Sure. She's on stage. You're over there. That doesn't mean it's right. But if she knew, if someone's like, hey, Ellen, so-and-so sexually has one of these people. What do you want to do? And she's like, that's not my problem. I don't want to hear about it. I love him. I want him working for me. Then you have something on her. Fine. But again, until we have that information, what are we fucking doing? You're going after someone that did way more good than any bad ever. Even let's say she did know. Let's say that is what she did was was bad. That's the worst thing. She kind of didn't know. She still went through fucking hell and did so much for fucking gay rights and even women. Women in comedy or TV. Right? Or how about all the fucking guests she's helped out? People who weren't celebrities or anyone. Does that not... Do you not get anything for all the work you did after 20 years? The, what, what? It's not... It's not to what's... I, I understand you can't earn to be a dick. I mean, no, you can't differentiate Okay, you can't earn to know something is bit bad and ignore it. That's what you're saying. Okay. But can you can you be excused? I don't think she was really Well let's say she did know. Let's say Ellen knew one of her producers was sexually harassing someone. What is the sexual harassment? What is that even? Is that like, hey, let me see your tits? Now we're throwing in racism. What was someone? What did someone do? One of the so you know the story. Yeah. What? So what was said? Uh huh. Do you say the N word? Yeah. So he said that one thing, yeah. and that's it. What? So what? So. Okay. So. Everybody in Hollywood knows that every fucking big television show or big production is toxic. Like, it's stressful because it's a fucking million dollar show. People are making so much money. Dude, there's 10 million people watching the goddamn show. They don't want to fuck up. I don't understand. I'm not defending it. I just don't think that. I think, here's my thing is, I think, why are we so quick to fucking go after someone who did more good than bad? Even if she did do bad, which there isn't proof that she did any bad. It's just you're, you're talking about, listen, what they're doing with Ellen's show, you could do with every single fucking show in history. Okay? You really want to fucking know what's bad? Go back to those early shows, the Wonder Years. What was the other? You want to know what bad shit happened on all those early shows in the 80s? Those fucking young kid actors were molested. Go back and fucking tear those shows apart. I don't know. Okay. One former black employee claims sh- an advertisement popped up so I couldn't finish reading it. You know how mad that got me? And you know whose fault that was? The it. And Cool. So scroll down. No, stop pushing the arrows. Okay. One former. Okay. What? No, I got it. Don't. Just scroll. It's there. You're You're making it harder. Don't you see what you're doing? It was right there. All you had to do was scroll down a little bit and then leave it. No, no, stop. Nothing's doing. This so is not this article. This article's back one. Leave it. Leave it. Now scroll. 
One former black employee claims she... <laughs> it keeps fucking popping up. Now, can you just push X and we'll see if it will go away? Okay, get it out. We're done. We're done. So a former black employee said that something, something happened. A former black employee said that that was said. Is that a big deal? Well, hold on. That's what the article said. Is that a, is that even a big deal? Am I wrong for that is? Well, no, no, no. A former so it said a former black employee. That's what the article says. Said that we got to pull it up. Okay, during a year and a half employee, she was when when she was hired, senior level producer told her and another black employee oh wow you both have black box box braids i hope we don't get you confused and at a work party she said one of the main writers told her i'm sorry i only know the names of the white people who work here and other co-workers awkward laughed it off instead of coming to her defense okay hold on that's not that bad that's not that bad i don't know i, I here, here again i would have, let, let me ask my black comic friends but go back up. I, w- I just want to reread it. I just want to reread it. A black woman who used to work on the Ellen DeGeneres show told BuzzFeed News she experienced racist comments, actions, and micro... Ag- wh- wh- why-, why would you move it when I'm reading it, right? Right? Would you just stop? She said, okay, racist comments. And she said when she was hired, a senior level producer employee, she uh, told her and another black employee, oh, wow, you both have box braids. I hope we don't get you confused. Okay. Yes, that's racist, right? We agree that's racist. Minor racism, right? Now, going back to like how we were talking about the Me Too thing and like shouldn't there be uh, degrees of sexual harassment or like like what Louis did is nowhere – what Louis did is nowhere on the – it's not even on the same playing field as what Cosby did. We Can't we agree on that? So now if we're going to do that with sex – if we're going to do that with murder, if we're going to do that with traffic violations, if we're going to do that with every other fucking violation, can't we do that with racism? Are we allowed to do that with racism? Can't we say there's different degrees of racism? That's not a guy calling someone an N-word or saying, like, we would never hire you because you're black. That's even worse, right? Something like that, as opposed to that could be ignorance, right? Can we consider that more ignorant? Someone not being aware that they're being racist? Isn't that something that a lot of people... Yeah, couldn't we now? Like, I, I would love to have my fucking roommate's opinion on this, Mister Rel Battle. After a discussion, we decided to just drop this whole subject, and we're gonna edit everything that we talked about out. No, 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 we're kidding. the 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 thing that even Rel was like, he was just like, he should still be fired for saying that. Of course. So I guess we didn't really get our answer of like, is there should be, should, he was just like, he should still be fired. There's no degrees of, there's no degree. So, but my whole thing is like, is there degrees of racism? Yeah. He was just like, sure. You're not fucking saying the N word or you're not like killing someone, but it's still racist. I guess, uh, you know what? We can't even touch. We can't even, we can't even tiptoe around this. We got to pull out. We got to come all over her boobies. Sorry, mom. Isn't it weird when I say something dirty, I have to say sorry, mom? My it, my, my whole thing is, okay, again, fine. There's that reason. What does that have to fucking do with Ellen? Why are we trying to get her? Why are we trying to ruin and cancel her? Feels like we hit a real speed bump in the, po- in the podcast, huh? Carry on evaluating friendships. We, maybe we should have a little bit music playing here. We're gonna have a little bit music going on because we're gonna get it real. We you, you, listen. There's a lo- uh, listen. You gotta understand. You don't evaluate friendships when you're young, okay? When you're a kid, and you're in elementary school, you're just there to have a good time. High school, or middle school, high school, even high school, you just are kind of going. What can you get from each other? What benefits you from it's 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 a very selfish transaction I would think until you get to your thirties would you agree, friendships, friendships are very transactional. Up until a certain point. 
for everybody. I think that friendships. Well, well then, no, no, no. I think friendships are very transactional, to a point, like or not, not transactional. They're more like, when you're young, when you're in high school. Are you friends with someone because you really like being friends with them, or because you want to be a part of what they're doing, or something like that, so to speak? Maybe that's what. No, no, I don't think. I think in, when you're in your thirties, it's more like, oh fuck it, I want to hang out with just that's it. You don't feel that way. You know what I mean? Sure. Now there's people you'll associate with with yourself because you, you, they can help you progress in your career. Sure, that's a real thing. All right, fine. Maybe I'm using the words wrong, but I just I think like you don't evaluate your friendships r- until you become an adult. That's really what it is. It's all about having a good time when you're growing up, correct? Mm-hmm. What happened? Yes. Yes, friendships are location-based and convenience for when you're younger. There's not much choice you have around it. But that's that's how it is now. We're both in L.A. You're, well, well, social media has made it easier to be friends with a lot of people. But my point is here, the whole point about this is is evaluating your friendships now is more about like what benefit. Listen, the thing is, do your friends, you always hear this. Do your friends support you? Do they help you? Do they, they, do they push you to become a better person? Do they, are, do they, you know, are they making you feel good about yourself? Do they, you know, cheer you on? It's hard to get that in a cl- tight crew, right? Do you feel like that is hard to have? How many of your good friends... Don't you feel like the closer you get with someone, the more you're like, fuck you? <laughs> don't you feel like that sometimes? No? Or don't you feel like it's, it's, it's harder to cheer on people you're closer to? I'm a bad person. You could have just said that. You didn't have to type that in. So now I had to read it. Water's kicking in. No, my whole thing is, I just, this is what I want to bring up. It's okay to move on from friendships. I think that's harder to do when you're younger. But if you think that, listen, there's people I love that I, I just don't, I love hanging out with them and I love seeing them, but there's just too much drama in our lives when we're together. It's not working out. It's almost like a relationship, right? No one you would know. I'm just saying over time, there's been a few. And there's even some comics that I love. Like I'll see them. Sometimes I'll get a call from them. I talk to them. Sometimes we'll even maybe get coffee. But they, they, I can't hang out with them all the time because it's just we're going to clash. And I've had that with comedians. And it's just like un- you're just like, oh, it's like it's not going to work out. It's almost like a relationship. Like you see an ex, you're like, hey, good to see you. But I can't be friends with you. How I can't. You, we can't be good friends. It's just not going to work out. Like identifying that I feel like is important. Like I feel like a lot of people don't want to identify that or they want to ignore it. It's easier not to, right? I feel like you could be hanging out with someone and then like you're like, whatever, we fight, we, we, we don't get along. But like over time you're just like, this is how, like – I'll I, like a specific friend. I'll, I'm reevaluating our friendship over the last five, six years. And it's just like, it's, there's always something. There's always something, whether it's my fault or their fault. There's just always something where it's just like, it's never smooth. There's always bumps. And I love the guy, but it's just like, isn't it better if we're just distant and then like we catch up? That's crazy to like that. It's I'm 36 and now I'm just thinking this. What? Like an issue would be like just maybe an issue would be okay. Good question. What's an issue? Like maybe like uh, something that's happening in life has so much weight in it for them, but maybe not for me. But then it's putting weight on my life. Does that make sense, or is that too broad? Okay, right. Okay, or or like another thing would be like, you know, emotionally you want to be there for them. But then emotionally, emotionally, you feel like you're being there for them a lot. Not even that it's a recipro- reciprocal. I think that's more important for women. A little bit, right? Or or just any person's different. Don't let's not be sexist. Sorry. But me, I, I don't I don't need the reciprocation. I'm not big I'm not one of those people. I'm not one of those people, but I understand that. I I could I can identify someone who now, there's people who are in, uh, who are financially well off, and also have, could it could be in the same career that you're in that are doing very well, that 
probably feel like they're experiencing that all the time as people want, 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 want for them. So I don't think everybody's built that way, but it's more about being like, like there's always like, maybe, maybe they're not mentally tough. Maybe they're going through something, whether it's relationship career wise or anything. It's just like, it feels like their, their emotional instability affects your life. If that makes sense. And I, I'm not saying that I've never done that to somebody else, but I feel like I'm pretty independent when it comes to, uh, any emotional instability if i did have any you know what i mean like uh, like if i go through something i'm not i'm not like i don't need your shoulder to lean on a lot like very rarely i've been like oh or or i wouldn't want to ask for it sometimes if something really bad is happening which i've experienced in the last six months people just show up and you're just grateful to have those people but it's more about like just the small little things that and you're there for them but you're also like I'm more someone if it I don't put value on something that you are letting hold you down, then I like to kind of brush it off more and carry on and you're not. And then now you're slowing me down. Does that make sense? Okay. So, I mean, there's things like that. So that's more specifically about like when you're not on the same wavelength with someone and you just feel like when you look back on all the years together, you're like, well, what's going on? This isn't, there's more, it's, it's more not fun than fun. It's sure it's not beneficial, but it's also it's, it's like exhausting. I'm not 21, you know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna be able to be there. Like you're lucky I'm not married with a family. I wouldn't be able to like just be there. So, and I think that understanding that it's okay to to leave those relationships and like back off of them, and it's fine, and nobody's gonna get hurt. Like you still can keep in touch with people, and it goes into like real relationships. I always tell people too. This is an interesting thing. Is like. Uh, relationships that, you know, where, where you're dating someone and they end, it doesn't mean it's a failure. If you date someone for four or five years and then you guys break up, it doesn't mean, oh, it didn't work out. I always kind of like, the, I, ne- I never heard that somewhere. I just made that up in my head. But I feel like that's true. Like life is, if you expand your life on a, on a piece of paper and you take maybe it's 70, 80 years, however long you live, and then you look at little pieces of like, oh, I had a four-year relationship here and then I had a six-year relationship here and then I had the but rest of my life with this person, you still learn something or could take something from those relationships. So then that, that there is, there is something to gain from those experiences. You had that experience, you, you learned, you grew as a person from those. So it's not a failure. I hate, I hate having the thought of like, Oh, this relationship was a failure. If that makes sense. So then that goes the same thing with, uh, with friendships. It's like, like I, like, I mean, dude, I had these two best friends, Jackson and Austin when I was in middle school, like seventh and eighth grade. And we would hang out, and this went on for like a year. And we we'd all flip around and go to each other's houses. And then I don't know what happened. But I always remember, I'm like, oh, it was like, I think it was my first time branching off from stopping, stop hand, hanging out with the neighborhood kids. So the neighborhood kids were a little bit older, but they weren't going to college. They weren't maybe the best uh, mentors for me. And not that this was even something pushed by my parents. It was more like, I was seeing like, oh, I want to be with kids who are going to go away. to Like I wanted that life. So I started hanging out with kids from school. So I started doing that in middle school. And then those kids, I don't know what happened, but like it's funny to think that those were my best friends, seventh, eighth grade. And then from ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, I had the same friends. And today I'm best friends with those same kids still. We still, we have a group chat together going back to high school. But those were the, those ended up being my main guys. Like for whatever reason that brought us together. And we'll, we'll always talk. And that is like, because we don't rely on each other emotionally as, as maybe where it's too much or something, as opposed to the best friends I have out here in LA, a couple have changed over the years, but they, and, and some of them I've looked at like my guys I've been friends with since like ninth, 10th grade, but like some, it just doesn't work out. It's weird. So I don't know. I don't know if that gets to you guys in a way. I don't know. It's getting a little hot in here. You do? I mean, it's fine. I'm sweating. Well, they need to know. I'm working hard. I'm working hard because I bombed last week and I don't want to bomb this week. So I got more real this week. I'm fucking watching a dog for you guys. All right, that brings us to the Manscaped part. And we know what's going on with Manscaped, okay? Because we know we're doing a good job. And we know what's up with Manscaped because we're, we're it, 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 it. Do you know about Ball Toner? Do you not know about Ball Toner? Look at this. Oh. Can you give the? Can you give that a smell? Let me know if that was on my balls. Would you feel like like lick, lick, mom? I'm sorry. What? Would you want? Hey, does that? Hey, does that make you ball toner? Throw me back the ball toner. By the way, if you go to manscaped.com 
and you use the promo code TAKEOVER, you get free shipping and you get 20% off any products on there. And you guys got to use them because we're all fucking, this is a Manscaped pod. And by the way, the ball toner thing, I'll let you know right now. I've talked to women out there, guys. They'll, they'll rub their face on your balls, right? Does that make you, mom, don't listen to this part. But I'm letting you know, by the way, my mom knows about Manscaped. She listens to the podcast. She understands it. She checked it out and she's fine with it. She gets it. She thinks it's a fun time, okay? She, she even said, she's old fashioned. My mom's 70. And she was like, you know what? If there was fucking ball toner back around when I was a kid, guess what? You wouldn't be here right now because I'd be all over everybody's balls. My mom said that to me. My mom said that to me. I swear. And she's listening right now. My mom said to me that if ball toner was around back when she was 21, Mr. Michael Anochi would not be around. Maybe I would. She said, you know what? I don't want to go this far, but she said I might have been swallowed. And I'm just saying that's disgusting. That's disgusting, and you know I'm going to get a disappointed phone call later this week. Yeah, I'm gonna, for sure. She's going to be very mad about that one. But that's because that's because she doesn't know about the razors. Remember what we said? If this is your balls, you go up like this. It. Do you want to see my balls? If I show you my balls, will you be like, whoa, 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 that's impressive because I use these? Did I also use this on my face last week? Yep. I can use it on my face. There's no rules. Now, however Manscaped wants to promote their products on their website, that's them. They're a business. But once it's in my hands, I can use it however I want. And ladies, Manscaped is not only for guys. Okay? You can turn one of these razors upside down. And I'm just saying, I'm not saying that it's tried it. But let's pretend. Okay? I'm just saying. I know there's women that listen to this podcast. You go to manscaped.com. Use the promo code TAKEOVER. Free shipping. New razor. Cheaper than that fucking rabbit you got. How about that? And you got a little light that goes into the dark. Just saying that's a possibility. Tell me that wouldn't work. That would work. You know it would. It, would that work? Oh, that wouldn't work. It, would that work? It, lie if you have to. (laughs) Are you for real? Guys, it just told me if you put it on your nose, that's what. Okay. You just got to go up more. No. No. Well, no, your nose is not a clit. Hey, your nose doesn't, your nose isn't, I can push this hard on your face. Push it hard on your face. Go to manscaped.com, get 20% off, use it, see, it, push it push it down. Yeah, it, 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 it still vibrates it. So weak on you, okay, you 40-year-old. See, I told you. Anyways, the, the, to be honest, my brother-in-law just got one of these too. They're fucking awesome. That's actually the best razor. It, you know why? Because I've I've had I've always had these for the road and stuff and like whenever. Because by the way, when I groom, I'm always I always do it in the on the road because I'm in a hotel and it's just e- easier to clean. Yeah, I just don't want to like do it in my own bathroom. So, using it on the road is just easier. But th- this one, even when I take the cap off and I use it to like shave up my cl- trim up my beard, it works the best. These are the most powerful. That's why. So we're promoting the Manscaped, the takeover right there. That's the code right there. Uh, check it out. Um, again, the underwear, I, I, I just did laundry, so I, I think I'll have I'll get to wear it again maybe in a couple days. The underwear is actually great too. Usually the underwear I use is, uh, what is it called, pair of thieves, Big, b- one of my favorite pairs of underwear. Same material on Manscaped. Same material where you, like you rub it. You know it. You felt my underwear before it. You feel it. It makes you like if you're touching it, it makes you want to rub my legs and, and body more. And then you get I, I'll hook up with myself just because of the underwear. I swear to God. So check out all the products on there. Help us out. Thank you so much. Back to the podcast. Boom. Water's kicking in. Where are we at? Oh, I'm good. I'm good at bro. What, what do you want, dog? Dog, what do you want? Has this podcast been fun? You think this has been a fun episode? You uh, you think we're we're glad you're back? Do I look like I'm sweating balls? 
It's because we were running around and stuff. I'll tell you what. It's been not as a silly episode as we usually are. Would you say that? It's been more real. No, no, no I'm saying we've been real. I'm not, I, you know, am I being a little scared, baby? I don't care. I get. Listen, I understand that some weeks is going to be sillier and off the walls, and some weeks are going to be more serious. Sometimes, I, you know, I'm thinking about the Ellen thing. I'm like, oh, we kind of t- we we kind of hit real shit this week. No, did we though? Or are people like, no, everything you said about that is stupid. You're a stupid guy. Okay, well then that's fine. <sighs> this fucking it. I swear to God, mom. I swear to God, you suggested having her back. And it is just a disaster. And I keep saying it's sex. And it bothers me that I fuck it up. It makes me want to go back to that episode where I switched back. I never know. This isn't even hit me, so it doesn't even matter. So there's no point of having it. The point of the fucking podcast is I'm, 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 you know what I'm disappointed in? I'm going to have to take two showers today. I'm not a two shower guy. What? You do two showers a day. You do fucking two showers a day. Now I'm mad. Here's the deal. I'm a guy who like takes a shower at night and then I go to bed and then I wake up. Why would I fucking wake up? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Let's say, for instance, right now, obviously, I have sweat uh, during this episode, the sweaty episode. Maybe that's what it's going to be called. But did you not want it to, to be? You want it to be the it is back? Okay, fine. Here's the deal. It. Hear me out. If I'm. If I so I take a shower tonight, right? Then I go to bed, and then I wake up. Why would I goddamn take a shower? Why, God damn it! No, fuck those people. I'm telling you right now, fuck those people. There's no reason to be taking a double shower. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. You you need the shower to fucking get your day going on. I know I'm being a hypocrite because I say make the bed and I say do all that stuff. You could be a shower guy. I'm not gonna hate on it. You know what? I, I'm working out every day So I'm going to shower when I'm done working out So if I'm done working out at 6 o'clock I take a shower Then I go out at night Yeah So I've showered I'm showering every day Because I don't understand The point of If you go to bed if you, if you I So I'll, tonight I take a shower I'm going to go to bed It's going to be 3 a.m. Why? No How? What are you doing in bed? My be- First of all it, it becomes an ice cube in here that's not right. Get an air conditioning. Most people are not wet in the middle of the night. Why are you sweating in bed? Then you need an air conditioning. Give you some money. You're the one with doing your other jobs at my podcast. And see how that? We all come together. And guys, every week I, cu- I bring it back together. Every week I bring it back together. And I fucking... I'm, not, I'm just not a double shower person. What was I going to talk about? Oh, do, here's the thing. I've never really thought about this, but I'm really good at brushing my teeth. I'm really good at brushing my teeth. Do you think you're good at brushing your teeth? Do you think you just do it and you're not thinking about it? That's the problem with you guys. That's the problem with a lot of you guys. You got to be good at brushing your teeth and you got to know you're good at it. A lot of you guys are brushing your teeth and you're not thinking about it. You're just like, oh, this is something I have to do. That's not what brushing your teeth is. Brushing your teeth, you have to be present. You have to know you're doing it, and that's how you become great at it. If you listen, if I was as good at brushing my teeth as I am now, that when I was eight or nine, I would be in every goddamn Crest commercial today. I'll tell you that right now. It would be like this ding! I'm telling you right now, I'm really good at it. Here's one of the tricks to brushing your teeth, and you got to be very present with this. You have to. To know that you can't be going fast. You have to slow down. You have to already, already, when you start brushing your teeth, here's the rule number one. You start brushing your teeth, already slow down. Always. It. Always. First of all, enjoy it. How about this? For women, you you know what I want you to pretend your teeth are? Exactly. Exactly. Pretend that's what your teeth are. Women, pretend your teeth and your gums Or you know what? Treat it like that. Bro, a lot of us are just doing this, right? We're just brushing our teeth. 
We're just brushing our teeth, not thinking. We're watching the TV, right? We're listening to a podcast. We're listening to Takeover. We're, 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 maybe we're in the shower. I don't know, but we're going aggressively, but you got to take your time. What did you type in? Oh, really? So you just distracted me? You do this. So when you're brushing your teeth, you're going too fast. You're going too fast. You got to slow down. Also, enjoy it. It's a sport. There's a way to be good at brushing your teeth. That's what I'm letting you know. If you're good at brushing your teeth, they're going to be clean. They're going to be great. How many times are you brushing your teeth a day? Twice? You brush it first thing in the morning? Do you brush your teeth Sometimes after, breakfast. after breakfast? Okay. I'm okay with that. If you're doing, if you're brushing your teeth before the breakfast, yeah, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong. You're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. When did you become a flosser? Are you a flosser? It's an American. It's an American thing, huh? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'll flip my bed over. I'll flip my goddamn bed over. You know when I became a fucking flosser? 2009. I remember becoming at it. Bro, if I was a... I'm, I'm really good at flossing. I'm good at flossing. I'm a good flosser. And, and here's the thing about flossing. I enjoy it. I fucking enjoy it and I want pain. I want I don't bleed. I don't bleed anymore. Nothing bleeds. There's no bleeding when I fucking floss. And people who hate flossing, you're not enjoying it and you're not having a fun time. There's there's ways about going at it. Okay? Just fucking it just think about it like it's your bedroom. Remember how I stressed about having a clean place? Then your real world problems will get cleaner and more organized. Organize your mouth. I'm good at it. I came late. I was a late bloomer. So what, 2009? What is that? 11 years ago? 25 is when I started flossing. I mean, you do it when you're growing up. But what's your age? You don't want to be in your 30s not flossing. It's fun. Enjoy it. Ruin your life. And for our final segment this evening, I'd like to talk about relationships. And I have some advice for you guys. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why would we ever ask you for relationship advice. You're a 36 year old guy, single, by yourself, with roommates. Why would we ask you? Because it's not about what I am or who I am. It's about what I know and how I know it. Because of my knowledge of talking to other people who know a lot about relationships. And also I've been to Amsterdam, so that's why. Should we do a different take? Let's do a different one. Hey, and I'd like to bring you up to the relationship advice segment of my podcast. And a lot of you right now are probably asking yourself, why should we ask you about relationships? What do you know about relationships? Well, that's funny you asked. I'm actually 36. And just because I'm a 36-year-old single guy with roommates doesn't mean I don't know about what I'm talking about. Because in my experience with women, I've asked them questions all the time. And I want to know how to become a better partner or IGE, example, um, cut. Hi, guys. You don't have to write this down. I know how I'm going to edit this part. Hi, guys. Welcome to the relationship advice part of my podcast. And you're probably asking yourself, why would we ask you for relationship advice? Well, it's funny you asked. It's because I'm the best and I know the most because I have the best experience in relationships. I've been in all different types of experiences and relationship types of people stuff. Now, that might be a little bit confusing, and that's the part that you're going to pay attention to. Hey, guys, welcome to the relationship advice part of the podcast. And I'm your host, Michael Inochi. And right now you're probably asking yourself, why would we ever ask you for any relationships about advice? Because guess what? Love comes to me, obviously. When someone knows they want to be in love, they show their true colors, okay? And that's why. I didn't even have to ask. That just happened naturally. Here's the deal. I want to talk to you about relationships, all right? And part of it is getting used to somebody is very hard. Would you, not, uh, would you agree it? Okay, here's the thing. A lot of people don't realize this when they're getting into a relationship. First of all, you have to ask yourself, what's your longest relationship? Now, if you have no experience in a long relationship, you have to understand that around the year mark of a relationship, or yeah, actually way before, about six, seven, eight months into a relationship, you start to get used to somebody. 
You start to get used to having them around. You start to treat them differently because you're used to having them around. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. You're allowed to do that because you're used to them. They become part of your everyday life. Remember how you brush your teeth too fast? You Guess what? You're, you're having a girlfriend too fast. You're, you're, you're doing the same thing. Remember how you don't floss enough? Well, you know what? You're not even paying attention to what you're saying to your girlfriend anymore or your boyfriend. You start to talk to them like you talk to anyone else, not realizing or hearing what they're saying, sometimes you're not even being present because it's just a part of your natural routine. This is a big thing that a lot of people fall into and one of the hardest things in a relationship. Now it, now that you know what I'm talking about, do you agree? You do. What are you doing? Just doing your thing. Cool. I just think that's a very important thing that I was thinking about this week and I think that's very actually hard to do that I actually don't have, to be honest, a lot of personal experience with because I've never really been in like two, three year relationships. I know, I know relationships break down at the one year mark. What's that? Oh, many people break up around the one year mark because they tend to realize that they are simply not as into their mate as they thought they were. Now, I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. Do you think that they're not into the person after one year because it became stale because it becomes a routine? Isn't that what it is? A little bit, but don't we get bored? Now, this might sound stupid, but don't we get bored with like the way our room looks? And then I have you reorganize it. So you're excited to go back to your room. Now, don't we get bored with our careers? So we try something different. Don't we get bored with our workouts? So we try other workouts and we switch it around. Don't we get bored with our meals that we're eating? Of course we do. So we try different things to cook. So are we getting bored with the physical person or with the way our relationship is? Because maybe the person is compatible because you are together and they're part of the routine and it's working. But it may be about your relationship isn't there anymore because the way you guys are going on dates or having sex is the same and you're not switching those specific parts up. These are all questions I'm asking because I don't know the answer, but you're here for relationship advice, but I'm making you ask those same questions to yourself right now. And maybe I'm sparking idea and idea. And that's the whole point is because I'm sparking ideas inside of me and I'm in, I'm, I'm sparking ideas inside of you. Buy your boyfriend a manscape thing. Use takeover promo code. That was a good quick slide in. That's what she said. You know, the, it, the way that it looks at me, I'll tell you that right now. I've never seen someone look at me like that before. Looks like someone that ha wants something that they can never have. <laughs> yeah, it's cool that you have light eyes. People with light eyes are better. <laughs> did you not know that? Did you not know, did you not know that? No. Yeah. Light eye people, like the whole world should be light eyes. It's a joke. No, what is this? How do I say that word? Aryan? Aryan race is a historic race concept which emerged in the period of the late 19th century and mid 20th century to describe people of Indo-European. Well, I'm more of a brunette guy. I'm more a brunette. I like brunette. You know what I really like? Find me a brunette with green eyes and I'll do whatever I have to do to fucking make her my wife. Do you know the rarest eye color is green? Pure green? No, no, no. No, 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 no. D no, she does not have green. It's probably hazel. You find me a brunette with green eyes, and I'm going to fucking settle down immediately. And you know what else I'm going to be? A good husband and father, because you know I'm good at that. Who's this? An attempt to define amber eyes is difficult. That's because shades of amber can light or dark contain yellow copper tint with hues of green, hazel, and brown. Hey, guess what? Do you want to see? Do you want to see that? Do you want to see who has that? Why don't you look into my goddamn eyes? Oh, I don't. I don't have. I don't have a little orange in them. Okay, keep that there, right there. Keep that right there. No, it, it tried. It tried me. No, I mean, I guess you would consider it like some people will ask. They're like, "Don't you have blue eyes?" I go, "No." And then sometimes people will be like, "You have green eyes?" I'm like, "No." And I can have brown eyes. It's just hazel. It's See, people say it's blue. I go, but it's considered hazel because it just changes colors. Because it can, 
like if I'm wearing a brown shirt, it looks like I have like light brown. No, you, it says hazel on my birth certificate. Yeah. Hazels change color. It's hazel. It's not blue. Have you ever seen someone with pure pure blue? Yeah, that's that's a, a, a type of mine with a little orange and green. Listen, you know how I don't have blue? Because if I'm wearing green, they look green. No. Like, look, that's more... No. No. Mine are not that blue. That No, mine would be more... Like, look at that blue. Don't, that's like a blue. Whatever. Wow. Either way, I mean, I want to I want to give my eyes to somebody. I want to give my eyes to somebody. That's what it is. Listen, I know what I have to offer. Here it is. Hey, who is that? Here it is. Here it is. This is my this is what I want to put out there. I know I have I know what I have to offer. And I have my eyes and I want to pass my eyes to somebody. And I'm out and I'm here and if you're there and you want eyes for your seeds then let's do this. Let's do this. Because light eyes, those people have good souls. Who are these brunettes with green? Oh, green-eyed brunette women. Oh, my God. If you're a green-eyed brunette woman, sign me up. Where do I go? Is there a dating app for green-eyed brunette women? I'll, you know who has it? I think Megan Fox. Look her up. Oh, Megan Fox is so annoying because we're close in age, and it's just like, what are you doing? How 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 come you didn't meet, meet me yet? And then she's with Machine Gun Kelly, and she's got kids. You know what? It's out of the it's out of the question. We're done. She's dating Machine Gun Kelly right now. Yeah, and it's just because they're doing it because you know they're just. You know, because he's fucking killing it. And she's like, oh, I want to get in movies again. That's my theory. I don't know. <sighs> Got a lot of work to do, but whatever. I think we're done, right? We faded out. Yeah. Was that good? You feel good about it? You want to come in the screen? You want to come sit on my lap? What? Is that disrespectful? I don't know. I mean, should we keep the it? I'm kidding. I like to do that. Oh, you really want to pull? No, it doesn't matter. It's not up to them. You don't do... Listen, this is the problem what, what we were talking about with the podcast the early. You don't do what they want. You do what you want to do. Oh, you want to know. You will over time. As the podcast grows, people will find out. They investigate. If they like you, they're going to... Oh, from what I, my experience with podcasts is if you're not the fucking host, they hate you. All podcasts. What? I have no idea. My whole thing is like, even like when I watch like guests on other shows, they're just like, like anyone who's on Rogan, you get shitted on. They're just going to fucking destroy you. Especially if you're a woman. It's so funny. They, they, his crowd, his fucking crowd hates women. And they, I, and they're probably more right too. Yeah. No, they're not right for hating women. She's that. Oh wow, Did the, is that how it came off? All right, here's the last thing, guys. Uh, for you fucking takeover fans, I heard there's a takeover thread on Reddit now. Somebody sent me one. Well, listen, we're not going there. Reddit's the worst place on earth. It's you're only gonna hurt your feelings if you go there. Anyways, uh, guys, check out the podcast. Can you please subscribe on YouTube? Please subscribe. Hey guys, takeover guys, subscribe on YouTube, please. If you're if you're watching on YouTube, can you please subscribe? Hit the subscribe button, the little icon in the corner right here. Hit that, and then you subscribe. If you're listening to Apple Podcasts or anything else, please leave a five star review. It really helps. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, eventually, we'll grow more and we'll get more going. And uh, I, I love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>